Vico Mortensen American actor and musician Vico Peter Mortensen Jr. R. is an American actor, musician, and filmmaker. He is the recipient of various accolades, including nominations for three Academy Awards for Best Actor, three BAFTA Awards, for Golden Globe Awards, and an Independent Spirit Award. Born, October 20, 1958, age 66 years, Watertown, New York, United States. Spouse, Exine Cervenka. M. 1987 to 1997. Partner, Ariadna Gill, 2009. Children, Henry Mortensen. Height, 1.8 meters. Awards, Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Cast in a Motion Picture. Since his screen debut as a young Amish farmer in Peter Weir's Witness, 1985, Vigo Mortensen's career has been marked by a steady string of well-rounded performances. Mortensen was born in New York City, to Grace Gamble, Atkinson, and Vigo Peter Mortensen, senior his father was Danish, his mother was American, and his maternal grandfather was Canadian. His parents met in Norway. They wed and moved to New York, where Vigo, Jr. was born, before moving to South America, where Vigo, Sr. managed chicken farms and ranches in Venezuela and Argentina. Two more sons were born, Charles and Walter, before the marriage grew increasingly unhappy. When Vigo was seven, his parents sent him to the St. Paul's boarding school, in the Cordoba Sierras, in Argentina. Then, at age 11, his parents divorced. His mother moved herself and the children back to her home state of New York. Vigo attended Watertown High School and became a very good student and athlete. He graduated in 1976 and went on to St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York. After graduation, he moved to Denmark, driven by the need for a defining purpose in life. He began writing poetry and short stories while working many odd jobs, from dock worker to flower seller. In 1982, he fell in love and followed his girlfriend back to New York City, hoping for a long romance and a writing career. He got neither. In New York, Vigo found work waiting tables and tending bar and began taking acting classes, studying with Warren Robertson. He appeared in several plays and movies, and eventually moved to Los Angeles, where his performance in Bent at the Coast Playhouse earned him a Drama Logue Critics Award. He made his film debut with a small part in Witness, 1985. He appeared in Salvation. 1987, and married his co-star, Exine Cervenka. The two had a son, Henry Mortensen. But after nearly 11 years of marriage, the couple divorced. In 1999, Vigo got a phone call about a movie he did not know anything about, The Lord of the Rings. At first, he didn't want to do it, because it would mean time away from his son. But Henry, a big fan of the books, told his father he shouldn't turn down the role. Vigo accepted the part and immediately began work on the project, which was already underway. Eventually, the success of The Lord of the Rings made him a household name a difficult consequence for the ever-private and introspective Vigo. Critics have continually recognized his work in over 30 movies, including such diverse projects as Jane Campion's The Portrait of a Lady, 1996, Sean Penn's The Indian Runner, 1991, Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way, 1993, Ridley Scott's G.I. Jane, 1997, Tony Scott's Crimson Tide, 1995, Andrew Davis's A Perfect Murder, 1998, Ray Lariga's My Brother's Gun, 1997, Tony Goldwyn's A Walk on the Moon, 1999, and Peter Farrelly's Green Book, 2018. Mortensen is also an accomplished poet, photographer, and painter. Family Spouse Exine Cervenka, July 8, 1987, to March 13, 1998, divorced, one child. Children. Henry Mortensen. Henry Mortensen. Parents. Grace Gamble Mortensen, Atkinson. Vigo Peter Mortensen Senior Relatives. Walter Mortensen, Sibling. Charles Mortensen, Sibling. Trademark. Cleft Chin. Quiet, methodical style of speaking. Often plays rugged, but reluctant heroes. 
frequently cast by David Cronenberg. Relaxed naturalistic acting style, soft mellow voice. Methodical and dedicated research and preparation for roles. Trivia. Purchased the horses he rode in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Hidalgo, 2004, after the films were completed. Speaks fluent English, Spanish, Danish, and French, but he also speaks yet not fluently Catalan, Swedish, Norwegian, Italian, and Arabic. Is also a jazz musician, he has released three CDs so far. At first, turned down the part of Aragorn of Lord of the Rings. His son convinced him to do the part. Broke two toes during the filming of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, 2002, in the scene where he kicks an orc helmet. While filming The Lord of the Rings trilogy in New Zealand, he would go surfing with the other actors in their spare time. One day he suffered an accident which left a bruise on the right side of his face. As a result, director Peter Jackson had to shoot only the left side of his face in the entire Moria sequence. Got so into his character of Aragorn that director Peter Jackson once addressed him as Aragorn for over half an hour, and Mortensen didn't even realize it. A skilled horseman, he did all his own stunts in Hidalgo, 2004, including a breakneck bareback ride that even the stuntman couldn't handle. He actually painted the large murals in his artist's studio in the film A Perfect Murder, 1998. While working on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he asked writer, director Peter Jackson to revise scripts so that his character Aragorn would be speaking in the Elvish language in several scenes of all three movies. He became good friends with the close-knit stunt men on the Lord of the Rings films, but they were wary of doing fight scenes with him because, carried away with the intensity of his character Aragorn, he would frequently really go at them and leave the other combatants in bruises. Massive actor Lawrence Makoare, playing Lurts under heaps of makeup which restricted his vision also got carried away during their fight scene at the conclusion of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, 2001, and, for once, Mortensen was left more bruised than the other actor. Elijah Wood said of him, everyone talks about how much integrity he has and how brilliant he is. And it's true. He's also completely insane. Was on April 16, 2010 knighted by Queen Margarethe II of Denmark. He is now one of five knights from The Lord of the Rings production, the others being Ian Holm, Ian McKellen, Christopher Lee, and Peter Jackson. In 1998, he appeared in two remakes of Alfred Hitchcock films, A Perfect Murder, 1998, a remake of Dial M for Murder, 1954, and Psycho, 1998, a remake of Psycho, 1960. Mortensen did not participate in the pre-production stunt and sword training given to the actors in The Lord of the Rings trilogy as he was cast as a replacement only two days prior to the start of filming. However, at the end of filming, the film's swordmaster, the legendary Bob Anderson, stated that Mortensen was the best swordsman he'd ever trained. Quotes On the role of an actor in film, it comes down to the fact that you supply the blue, and they supply the other colors and mix them with your blue, and maybe there's some blue left in the painting and maybe there isn't. Maybe there wasn't supposed to be any there in the first place. So have some fun and make a good blue and walk away. I don't plan my career, I wait and hope the right thing will find me. Photography, painting, or poetry, those are just extensions of me, how I perceive things, they are my way of communicating. I'm the one who said yes to these movies and now I'm having to pay the price for it. I mean, if I had my druthers, I wouldn't do any movies anymore, frankly. I was on my way out of a Sunday rehearsal. When I was walking out of the gym, all sort of sweaty, half in street clothes and half in Aragorn's clothes, waving the sword around, trying to keep a mental picture of what we'd just done. Just walking down the street, down to where my car was parked, on a Sunday afternoon, waving the sword around, looking like some desperate Rasputin character. Cop's car comes, there's been some report. I'm not 23 years old, and I don't have plans to make another 20 big Hollywood movies or something. Well, I certainly wouldn't be here, and my face wouldn't be up there on a poster if it wasn't for the success of Lord of the Rings. It's just a fact, filmmaking, finance, life. Seeing who you are playing with is a relief. In The Lord of the Rings, we did a lot of things when there was nothing there. 
but I can also publish books by interesting painters and writers, and I can afford to do so because my own books sell and there's a public that's interested in that. And the public have gone to see exhibitions I've had more than they would have. There is no star in LOTR. The fellowship is a union. On David Cronenberg, it's comforting to be working with someone you know will make a good movie. Some people will say, ah, he's over the top, it's gratuitous, but, I disagree completely, he's one of the most responsible filmmakers today, as far as showing violence, which there's very little of compared to other movies. It just stays with you, because he shows very little of it. It just stays with you, and he's very direct about it. He shows you what happens, and what the consequences are physically and emotionally, in some cases, certainly he does in A History of Violence, 2005, and also here, in Eastern Promises, 2007, that makes him very honest on David Cronenberg. Life is short. I like to pay attention while I'm going through it. Whatever I see, like anyone else, I'm going to filter it and create my own idea of what it is. On painting, creating music, writing poetry, and taking photographs in addition to acting. I'd like to, when it's all said and done, say that I have at least a few stories that I feel proud of. I don't just want to look back and say, I was on X number of magazines. As far as money goes, there's a saying in Denmark, your last suit doesn't have any pockets. You can't take it with you. You can make all the money you want, but who cares? On his research for Eastern Promises, 2007, I found some materials, some books, and also a documentary a friend of mine made called The Mark of Cain. It's a hard thing to do, but she went into maximum security prisons in Russia and spoke to people like Nikolai. And I went to Russia as well. The character gives me something and I give him something. I love props in movies in general props have a power. I always place great importance on them. There's things that happen there's movies where there's been a scarf, or a bandana, that has its story, and it goes from one character to another, or a hat that has a story. I end up having notebooks full of things, quotes, ideas, historical facts in this case, and even clothes, and books, and things, and then you put it in a big pile. The closer you get to shooting, you take this one away, you take that one away, and then the pile gets smaller and smaller. Then it's time to shoot and you only have a few things, but they represent all the other things. You know what I mean? It's there if you need it, in your mind. Salary. Hidalgo, 2004, $2 million. <laughs>